A fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. first railroad was being built in the West, the country was wild and lawless. Both Indians and renegades attacked the construction crews, and the great task might never have been accomplished if it had not been for the masked rider of the plains. His great strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness blazed the trail for progress and finally made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Range. Otto's waiting for us. Otto Silver, away! The advanced construction camp of the new Southern and Western Railroad had been set up in Warren City, and almost at once the little village became a boom town. Not only railroad men, but gamblers, confidence men, even outlaws thronged the main street. Matt Kirby, in charge of company stores for Warren and Miles, had found a cottage for his mother on the outskirts of town. And one evening, as they ate their supper together... What's the matter, son? Nothing, Ma. You don't seem to have much appetite. Well, sure I have. Just eating slow because I'm thinking. What about? Ma, I don't think it's a good idea for you to stay here. Oh, so you want to get rid of me. Oh, no. You know it isn't that. But a railhead town can be mighty rough and disorderly. <laughs> I lived in them with your pa and it never hurt me any. Well, Warren City may be different. In what way? Don't look any different to me. I got a feeling there's going to be trouble. Oh, if you mean fights and a little shooting and things like that, I don't call it trouble. That isn't what I mean. Things have been happening to our supplies. There was a whole boatload of them destroyed by fire on the docks at Omaha. That isn't all. There's something or, or somebody behind it. I was talking to Mr. Warren just this afternoon. And if the guess he made is right, we're in for plenty of trouble. What did he guess? I'd rather not say. Oh, you better. You can't get me curious and then shut up like a clam. Well, there might be somebody who don't want us to get the road built as far as the junction by October. Oh, but you've got to do that. Warren and Miles lose their government subsidy if they don't. You don't have to tell me. They wouldn't be able to go on. Don't you see, Ma? If that's the case, we're going to have a fight on our hands. And Warren City won't be any place for a woman alone. Well, I'm not alone. I'll have to be in Omaha a lot. I can't stay here all the time. Whether you're here or not, I won't be alone. But you don't know anybody else. Oh, yes, I do. I had to call her this morning. Who? A girl named Mary Hamilton. Mary? Mar Mary Hamilton came here? What's wrong with that? Did she tell you where she worked? She's a singer at the Silver Trail Cafe. What about it? But, Ma... Maybe you think she isn't good enough to call on me. Why, I, I think she's the sweetest girl in the world. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know you do. And after talking to her, I'm inclined to agree with you. You see, Matt, I'm the one who asked her to come here. 
I figured it was about time I got to know the girl my son was going to marry. <laughs> but, Maud, well, I've asked her, sure, but she hasn't given me an answer yet. <laughs> well, I won't warn her against you. And it doesn't make any difference? Her working in the Silver Trail? You ought to give me credit for having more sense. I'm proud to call her a friend. I'd be even prouder to call her my daughter. Gosh, Ma, that's swell. So, you see, I won't be alone no matter how much you're away. I wish both of you were back in Omaha. Well, we aren't, and we don't want to be. So you might just as well get used to it. Now, eat your dinner. I can't. What? It's 7 o'clock. i got to get down to the station. They can unload that train without your help. i got to see Carlin. Oh. So long, Ma. And uh, don't wait up for me. I may be awful late. When Matt reached the station, the supply train from Omaha was just pulling in. He elbowed his way through the crowd on the platform, and when the train finally stopped, the single passenger coach was directly in front of him. Steve Carlin was descending the steps. How are you, Matt? What happened? Nothing. The train's half an hour late. Well, we did have to stop warns, but it didn't amount to much. Something go wrong with the engine? Well, not with the engine. <laughs> it was engines. Engines? Between here and Omaha? Yeah, they dropped a tree across the track. The Army's got to be warned about this. Oh, no, Matt. There are only a few of them. They didn't have any rifles or nothing. When we opened fire, they jumped on their ponies and hightailed it. I want a complete report. You're the boss. Thanks for the ride, Carlin. That's all right, Mr. Kimberly. See you later, Steve. Kino, Ross. John Kimberly and Ross Chalmers. How come they're riding the company train? Well, I didn't exactly know what to do, Matt. Kimberly came up to me just as we were ready to start and asked if he could ride to the railhead. I knew he was an important man. I was afraid to say no. thought Mr. Warren or Mr. Miles might be sore. You've got your orders. No one rides the train without a pass. Well, he said he had some business with them. Don't you realize they're competitors? Kimberly wanted to build this road himself. He bid against them. I didn't know what to do, and you've got to admit he's important. What about Ross Chalmers? Well, he wanted to see Mr. Warren about a job. You swallowed that? He sounded convincing. Ross Chalmers never did an honest day's work in his life. All he wanted was a ride. And if you're getting friendly with men like him, I don't like it. I'm not getting friendly with him. Well, this much is certain. If there are engines between here and Omaha, we've got to post more guards along the tracks. And Mr. Warren's got to be told that Kimberly and Ross Chalmers are in town. We'll have them watched every minute. You get over to your cabin and write out a full report. I'll see to unloading the cars. You're the boss. Later that night, the Lone Ranger, without his mask but wearing a disguise, was watching the crowd in the Silver Trail Cafe. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, was standing beside him. Who's the girl who just sang, Tonto? Matt Mary Hamilton. Oh, yes. Young Matt Kirby's girl. Ah. Who's that man that's walking toward her? Don't I not know him? I've seen his face before. Let's get over closer so we can hear what they're saying. Uh. It's been a long time, Mary, but I hope we're still friends. I don't know whether we are or not, Ross. You still like me, don't you? You're taking that for granted, of course, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe. You shouldn't. Well, I haven't changed much, ever. Well, if you haven't, then there's no chance of our being friends. Oh, now, Mary. I mean it. It's been a year, hasn't it? Paul was still alive. Yeah. I thought you were wonderful then. When Paul told you you couldn't come to the house anymore and told me about the men you were running around with, I... Well, I just couldn't believe it. Your pa was awful set in his ways. I take after him, Ross. You do? And somehow I don't think you're wonderful anymore. You see... I've met someone who is. Oh, so that's it. That's it. You could be a fine man if you wanted to. And I hope you will be someday, but until you go to work and settle down, there's no chance of our being friends. You still like me. Hmm. What's that mean? I used to like that carefree look in your eyes. I used to think you were dashing and heroic. Now I think you're conceited. Ouch. I'm sorry, Rose. Now, listen, Mary. All right, there's someone trying to get your attention. Where? By that door leading to the back room. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, you'll have to wait. Before you go, Ross, I want you to answer one question. Well, I'll be back I'll in... I'll be gone. I'm going over to Mrs. Kirby's. I want you to answer me right now. Well? Did you have anything to do with that attack on the train this afternoon? Well, I was riding in the passenger coach. That doesn't answer my question. Of course not. Well, how could I? 
You're making me out a lot worse, hombre, than I am. I hope so, Ross. Why will you go around the back of cafe? I want another look at that man who signaled to Chalmers. Then go in the back room. Yes. I'm wondering if there's anyone else in there. Maybe so. That's the window up ahead. Quiet now. Only the two of them. Uh, Tonto not know why the fella. Him look like outlaw, though. Yes, he does. Keep his hubby. Got a room open. I see it. Someone else coming in. Uh, it's Kimberly. Not right. Kimberly in Warren City. An attack on the supply train this afternoon. Uh, we could only hear what they're saying. Mm, window closed. Them talk low. Who has charge of the supply train's tunnel? Matt Kirby. And we're going straight to him. And first, I'm getting rid of this disguise and putting on my mask. Not plenty dangerous. I've got to warn him. I've got to let him know who I am. One. Steady, Silver. Oh, Steady, boys. Oh, oh. <laughs> They're light in front room. Time to see Matt and girl. Him come to door. The older woman must be his mother. Good evening. Howdy, stranger. What can I... Well, your mask. Easy there. You not go for gun. We're coming inside. A mask, man. This Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. You got a mask, all right, and there's an engine with you, but how you to... look out window. There's Silver. His horse. If you're really the Lone Ranger, I know how you can prove it. I'd rather do that with the news I've brought to Matt. They say you wear a ring. A gold ring with a secret compartment. Here. Well, that might be it. I've never heard what it looks like. What about the compartment? It works like this. Oh, he's telling the truth, man. I'll say he is. That horse out there must be silver. What do you want, masked man? He said he had some news for you, man. Shoot. I'm afraid you're in for some trouble. I've guessed that already. John Kimberly will be responsible. John Kimberly? You don't mean to say he's a crook, do you? Until just recently, he was one of the leaders in the plot to overthrow the government. What? But we can't prove it. Right now, he's trying to slow up the building of the railroad and send Warren and Miles into bankruptcy. Can you prove that? Not yet. What makes you so sure? There was some trouble up at the railroad's lumber camp on the Neora. I heard about that. Just a month ago. Now, Kimberly was behind it. One of his lieutenants took all the blame and went to jail without talking. We were in Omaha when he was tried. Kimberly testified against him, masked man. And that doesn't make any difference. How don't I know that he's guilty? I'll take your word for it. What's he up to now? It looks to me as if he's trying to hold up your supplies. We saw him in the back room of the Silver Trail less than an hour ago. He was talking to a man with a scar on his face. And another man called Ross. Ross Chalmers? That may be his last name. We couldn't hear what they were saying... We believe there'll be another attack on the train, perhaps tomorrow. At Willow Creek? They may pick a different place, I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. We'll be ready for them. Make sure the train's well guarded. Not on our heading for Willow Creek right now. We'll pick up the trail of the party that attacked the train today and Those then we'll... renegade engines today. Well, if that's true, we'll find their camp and get word of the fort. Soldiers will round them up. Now, here's what you must do to guard the train. Three men had noticed Silver and Scout outside Matt's house and had reined up in the shadows across the street. That white stallion belongs to the Lone Ranger boys, I'm sure of it. You'll never get another chance like this one. Don't worry. We'll plug him as soon as he steps through the door. If you don't, he may stop you from earning a thousand. We'll get him. Nobody will blame you. A masked man is an outlaw. Who lives there? Matt Kirby. That ought to prove what I said. But I just saw a girl at the window. It looked like... Mary Hamilton. She and Matt are going to get hitched. Look out. Here he comes. <laughs> That horse warned them. They jumped down from the porch. And they're keeping the horses between them and us. Open fire. What's the use? They're riding with one foot in the stirrup and hanging on by the pommel. They still got cover. Let them have it. I'm not shooting any horse. Now they're swinging into the saddle. Open fire. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached Willow Creek, they picked up the trail of the party that had attacked the train and followed it across the prairie for several miles. And then on the edge of the Badlands, they reined up. Steady there, Silver. Steady, boy. (coughs) Many men may camp here. Yes, Tonto, but the men were Indians. They left their clothes. They were all around here. Ah, and here pan. This stain them put on. They washed it off in the creek before they put on their own clothes. Not right. I don't know, plenty long time, them not Indian. Their horse not make same mark like Indian pony. Come on, Silver. I'll try to pick up their trail where they left camp. Ah, uh, them leave horse here. And when they rode away, they... Up ahead, Toto. The tracks are clear there. Ah, uh, plenty clear. Them head for Warren City. For Warren City. They were outlaws then, not Indians. And that man with the scar must have led them. And uh, what we do? We've got to find the gang before we go for the soldiers. They can't guard the whole stretch from Warren City to Omaha. Uh, that's right. We've got to find the man with the scar and follow him. Steady, boy. <laughs> Come on, Silver! Get him up, Scout! Gosh, Mitch, you sure got me up early this morning. Train don't leave for Omaha until 8 o'clock. Schedule's being changed. What's that? We're leaving at 7. We? Oui. Does that mean you're going along? Yep, and you've got plenty of work to do between now and then. You're the boss. The train may be attacked again today. Oh, I don't think so. I do. I don't know whether it'll be on the way to Omaha or on the way back this afternoon. But we've got to make sure the supplies get through. Yeah. That means we've got to be ready for a fight. I want you to round up 50 men to ride the passenger coach. That's a lot. We may need them. Any, uh, anybody in particular you want? I want men who shoot straight. The rest is up to you. Kino, boss. I'll have them for you in half an hour. As we go, Scott. Yeah. It's a good place for a camp. Yeah. <coughs> Plenty of cover. Shall I light a fire and cook some grub? You might as well. It's almost noon. When will the boys be showing up? They won't be. Huh? Our plans were changed just before the train left this morning. What's the idea? Why didn't you tell me? Why should we ride way out here if we aren't going to... We are going to. Well, not just you and me. All we have to do is tear up a few rails at the top of Lookout Hill. I don't get it. Well, just keep your shirt on and I'll tell you. Six o'clock this morning... Matt Kirby told Carlin to round up 50 men with shooting irons and load them on the passenger coach. Well? Those 50 men are working for us. They are? Sure. Carlin knew where to find them, and he went and got them. Then he vouched for them to Matt, and that's all there was to it. You mean Carlin's working for Kimberly, too? I sure do. You'll get to know everybody in a little while. Why didn't you tell me this in town? Because I saw you talking to Mary Hamilton last night, and you seem to be right friendly. What's that got to do with it? Matt Kirby's riding the train, Ross. When the train stops on Lookout Hill, he'll stop the first bullet. Huh? It's got to be that way. He'll be in the passenger coach, and the boys will have to get him before they go after the crew. I don't like it. Fifty men against one. I didn't think you'd like it. That's why I didn't tell you. You're friendly with Mary. Mary's getting hitched to Matt. I figure you might be friendly with Matt, too. Oh, that's got nothing to do with it. I'm sorry. I figured right. Fifty against one. Why, it's just the same as dry gulching him. You aim to do anything about it? I sure do. I'm going to ride on to meet the train and warn him. You're through, Ross. Huh? I said you're through. Otto, a shot came from the hollow. Ah, man with Scar and Ross there. We've got to show ourselves. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. It's Ross. Him get on horse. Stand where you are. Him raise hand, not go for gun. All right, boy, steady, oh, steady. Who's got hope on a hole? Who fired that shot? It was Scar. He creased me, but all it did was knock me down. Which way did he go? That way. You watch this from Tonto. I'll go no, ahead no, and no, see... No, no, wait. I've got to tell you what it was all about. 
You've got to listen to me. So the outlaws are on board the train. Yeah. It's 50 against one. I believe you're telling the truth, Ross. I swear it. Scar must be captured before he can tear up those rails. And then Matt must be warned. Well, don't, don't make any difference about the rails. They got enough men to take over the train whenever they want to. They won't try it until they get to Lookout Hill. That's one thing in our favor. I've been wondering, though. What can you two do against so many? It'll only be one of us. You'll have to ride to the fort and get the soldiers' tunnel. Uh, Let me do that. You? I'll be glad to. I want to. Until Scar shot you, you were a member of the gang. Well, I hadn't been for long... And I didn't know the kind of polecats I'd lined up with. Besides, I... Well, I... I got a personal friend who thinks an awful lot of Matt. I don't want anything to happen to him... For her sake. I see. Very well, Ross. You can take our message. Well, the colonel doesn't know me. You better write it out. I won't be necessary. Here, just wear this ring. He'll know you come from me. Good. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come Uh, him not no shortcut through canyon. Rain up, steady, oh, boy. Hold steady. Hold fella, hold. You'll be running that turn any minute now. Uh, yeah. Try to hear him now. Rain up and reach. What the? Him go for gun. My hand. We're going to rope you and leave you here, Sky. Uh, do it plenty fast. All right. Get up, Scout. Get up. What's the idea? You get off, boss. Did Kimberly hire you to do this job? I don't know what you're talking about. You're on your way to Lookout Hill to rip the rails and stop the train. Don't prove it. That won't be hard after your men are captured. Don't make me laugh. You may get off easy if you tell the truth about Kimberly. I never heard the name. Him not get away now. All right, Tonto. We can't waste any more time here. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. <laughs> Halfway down the hill, Tonto. Master Silver. Here come train. We'll stop here. Easy, boy. Oh, Easy. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Those trees will give us cover until the engine and the freight cars have passed Kimosabe. When the train gets us far up the hill, it won't be going very fast. We'll ride out, and I think I can get aboard the platform of the last car. You get on board? It's the only way. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. Here we go. You are tough on your camp. It won't be hard. Closer, boy. Closer. That's it. <laughs> Open your hands, all of you. It's all right, boys. A lone ranger. What's the idea of the gun? Come here, Matt. Make it fast. Sure thing. There's no need of a gun. I'll explain later. Get up that ladder to the top of the car. What's that? There's no time to argue. We've got to get up to the front of the train and protect the fireman and the engineer. Matt followed the Lone Ranger's instructions, and soon the two men were on top of the passenger coach. And they started forward, jumping the spaces between the cars. The masked man explained the situation as they ran. And at last, they reached the open car where the wood for the locomotive was carried. Slipping and sliding over the logs, they hurried on toward the cab of the locomotive. You'd better explain to the engineer. He won't understand my mask. Judge! Al! There's going to be some shooting for you soon. But you keep that engine ramming while I tell you to jam on the brakes. What's up? Don't ask any questions. Just tell me your jobs. This is far enough for us. Well, these logs up so we'll have more cover. Make ourselves a fort, Al. We may need it. You can't see the tops of the cars from here. They'll be coming after us. You can be sure of that. We've got to keep them back from the edge of that next car so they can't get a shot at the engineer or the fireman. There's the first one. I'll take care of him. <laughs> Lone Ranger shot the gun from the hand of the first outlaw as he came into view in the top of the next car. After that, the outlaws crawled to the edge of the car, but time after time, Matt and the Lone Ranger drove them back. The train reached the top of the hill and picked up speed as it headed for Warren City. On and on, mile after mile, and still the gunfight went on. Good work, Mask Man. That'll hold them for a while. Hey, Matt, look up ahead. Are those more outlaws? Horsemen. How about it? Are those more outlaws? No, Matt. Those are soldiers from the fort. Tell the engineer to stop the train. Stop the train, John. It's the cavalry. The train.
train was brought to a stop just as the troop of cavalry raced alongside. When the outlaws saw the uniforms of the soldiers and realized there was no chance for escape, they threw down their guns, and Carlin was the one to set the example. Afterwards, they were being herded back into the passenger car. Tell the truth, Carlin. It was Kimberly who hired you to do this job? I took my orders from Scar. I never heard of Kimberly. You won't get any more out of him, Matt. All right. Into the car. We still have one chance, Matt. Scar won't talk, and neither will Carlin. Ross Chalmers must know oh, enough sure. To... The armory that went after the soldiers. Where is he? Well, I, I thought I saw him right up with them, but on There. What? There's a man lying on the ground over there. Looks like Ross. What's the matter with him? No, no, there wasn't a shot fired after the soldiers came. Sure don't look healthy to me. Howdy. Howdy, masked man. Ross. Ross. How did you get hurt? It was Scar's bullet. He creased me a little deeper and I let on. Why didn't you tell me? You think I'd have let you ride all the way to the fort? Nope, that's... That's just why I, I didn't say nothing. Here, masked man. Here. Here's your ring. It was an honor to wear it. Golly. Hey, Kimasami. Time to bring it. Oh. What's wrong here? Kimasabi, it's... It's too late to do anything. I'd like to shake your hand, mister. Are you... Are you Matt Kirby? Yeah. Gladly, partner. Take good care of Mary. I... He's gone, masked man. Yes. He may have... Well, he may have made mistakes... The way he died wasn't one of them. Otto. Uh. It was Kimberly who killed him. Kimberly even more than Scar. Someday he'll pay for it. Mm, that's right. Steady, boy. Hold on, Silver. Get him up. Hold on, Silver. Hold on. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>